this will be the unit today. Uh, TXV blower is going. There it is. It's economizing right now. Good deal. Blower's going. Belt looks nice and tight. Rescue belt. Looking to see if I have any power on this unit. Looks like I have a convenience outlet and it's green, so no need to bring up any extension cords. It's time to get it on a recovery. Alright, so I got the recovery set up hooked up right now, but I'm first I'm gonna run it and replicate the symptoms that I was getting last time. It was a uh, really high superheat, really high subcool. Uh, freezing of the TXV and uh, I'm just want to make sure that we've got the same thing going on today so I'm not replacing something that doesn't need replaced. The unit's only been running for a minute but it's already slammed shut. The TXV is slammed shut not letting any refrigerant get through to the evaporator. The evaporator is actually acting like a freezer right now with negative 7 degrees of saturation temperature. So we definitely have a restriction or it's stuck or the sensing bulb's not working anymore. She's starting to ice up already. And the damper is wide open. We have plenty of return air. It's probably 75 in the store right now. All right, the recovery is going. My gauges have already turned off. My gauges are not wanting to come back on. Uh-oh, that's not good. Might need some batteries. Um, that sucks. It shouldn't take that long to pull down. The unit's only got, oh gosh, I can hardly read it. Maybe four pounds, five pounds at the most. I'll find out, I'll figure it out. Pulling down pretty fast now. I found the charge on the inside sticker. Seven pounds, seven ounces more than I thought it would be for a four ton package. I will have to replace the dryer today. I got, I think I got an oversized dryer, but it'll be okay as long as it fits on there. I might have to get some fittings. I think I got a big boy dryer. Three eighths as well, and I think that's a quarter. So I have to use some fittings on it. Should be all right. I got it pulled down into some inches of mercury. I got some insulation stripped back. I think I'm gonna unbraze it. I don't. I don't. Maybe there. Maybe right there. I don't want to cut it back because I don't have to swedge it. And I don't have a swedger that small on me at the moment. We should be fine to just unbraze it right here. And then sweat the uh, equalization line out. And take this apart as well and I got some nylog to put the new one back together with so it should be all right and of course I got to cut out the uh, the dryer I think I'm gonna do that right now and then I gotta get torches on the roof all right so I got the dryer cut out 
It's just a little baby. I don't even think that's set up for four tons. Because when I went to the, uh, the supply house, uh, who makes it? Sporlin. Sporlin rated this as like a half a ton. So, I, I'm just, I don't know how they're expecting a four ton unit to use a half a ton dryer. But anyways, I got the, uh, the bulb is undone, the TXV is undone, I got some tape over it so nothing gets down in it. I'm not sure, but it looks like I got some copper plating on the outside of my Schrader valves. It doesn't look good. <laughs> uh, that, that looks like the discharge and then this was the suction. Uh, they could just be made like that, but I don't know. It looks like copper plating to me acid in the system probably bad news bad news and there's there's just a little bit of stuff inside this nothing nothing too crazy but I think at some point some moisture or something was in this system uh, I don't see any other refrigerant repairs done to it though so I'm not sure at what point or how air got in the system or water but we'll figure it out We'll get it up and running right. The nitrogen purge is set up. I had to use a couple of fittings that were just a little bit oversized, so I pinched them. But they're gonna they're gonna do the job all right. It's gonna be fine. <laughs> it's gonna be okay. Uh, I've got wet rag on the TXV. I need to unsolder the equalization tube. Uh, I've got some, uh, what's that stuff called? Hell if I remember it. Thermo trap. I got thermo trap sitting on the coil in the back. Thermo trap on that weld. I don't want it heating up. Thermo trap all the way out here. And thermo trap sitting on those wires back there. So I'm just going to go ahead and smash it with some uh, solder and put this whole thing back together. It took a minute. But the new TXV's in. Uh, equalization lime, scenting bulb. We got a little, a little crazy with the heat, but everything's, everything's okay. That's a uh, temperature sensor, discharge temperature sensor. I am not the world's best brazer. I never will be. But I did get these connections nice and put together. I used my uh, purge device to keep a steady flow of nitrogen in the system. Just enough to keep us from making any scale. Uh, we should be good. Nice clean system. I'll pull a vacuum on it. Actually pressure test it, then pull a vacuum on it. Holding. I uh, got a, a, a 50 and bubbled everything. I bubbled all my welds. Uh, I got it up to 300 and like 30. And I started losing pressure, and it was my, I'm pretty sure it was my flare fitting, or not my flare fitting, but my mechanical fitting on this TXV. So I came over and tightened it down a couple, you know, quarter turns, and uh, it stopped dropping. And now it's actually gaining due to, you know, thermal dynamics. <laughs> as dumb as that sounds. Uh, the heat hitting the coil and whatnot. So, I'm going to let it sit for, I don't know, another five minutes. Make sure, doubly sure that it doesn't lose any pressure. I also, before I finished up with the, all the brazing, I came back because I was worried about this equalization tube getting plugged up with solder. And I pulled it out and made sure it was clear. And then I was very careful to put it back in. So, it should be good as well. But, I like what I'm seeing now. We should be uh, about ready to put a big vacuum on it. C321.2, hasn't lost anything. That's a lot of pressure to hold back too. If we had a leak, it would have dropped. All right, so I've got everything set up for the evacuation. Now I've got, I've got 
pressure in this freaking line because I didn't close it, but it's gonna go away after a while. Um, I've got the CPS vacuum gauge, uh, field piece wireless scale, super freaking windy, a CPS vacuum pump. Uh, I've got two half inch hoses, uh, two Appion valve core removers. So I've got them closed off right now. I'm gonna turn. I'm gonna open up the first stage. I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna cycle these valves real quick. Cause the air likes to sit inside them. Just like that. Now I'm gonna let it ride. And we're gonna watch the microns drop. I'm trying to not lose all my gloves. It should pull down fairly quick. With it being such a small system. Once it gets down to a thousand microns, I'll go ahead and close that that ballast and let it uh, finish up the roughing vacuum and go into a, a deep vacuum. This bypass to get a nice deep vacuum. But I'm going back with RS44. It's R4538. Uh, our company states to use 90 pounds of the original charge when you use this, so we are losing some capacity. So it came with 7.7 .7 pounds. I'm going to put 6 pounds, 6 ounces back. Turn my vacuum gauge back on. We decided it was through working today. I guess that's the firmware number on it. So it's down to 280 already. I'm just gonna let it sit there and work on it, munch on it, chew on it. So with the half inch hoses, it doesn't take but a minute to pull down a system with a short line set. It's really amazing. Go ahead and see if there's any air back behind these valves. Looks like there was a little bit. Now it's still dropping. Two thirty. I don't expect it to get super low because I've got a lot of connections. As you can see, there's just. There's a lot going on. There's refrigerant sitting on the back side of this valve right now as well. So the second I'm done with the vacuum, all I have to do is just crank this real quick and start watching my scale and wait for six pounds, six ounces to go in. I might have enough, I don't know. But it's pulling down pretty good, 190. You can't ask for much better than that. So what I'll do at this point is I'll valve this off God bless Appion, right? I'll valve this off and come down here to my unit. Turn it off. And then I'll just watch these microns. And they're going to fluctuate a bit, but as long as they don't climb, I'm okay. I'm okay with it dropping and equalizing it by dropping, but I don't want to see that sucker go anywhere above like 200. So I'm going to give it a minute. Make sure it doesn't do anything crazy, and then we'll cut some gas into it, and we'll uh, go ahead and charge it. I'm gonna put this door back on. Okay, door's back on. Holding at 170. I'm gonna cut some gas into it. So all I have to do, I'm gonna go ahead and zero this out again because it, it's rocking around in the in the tube or in the jug. All I have to do is cut this. It's already been purged up to here and this on the other side is a vacuum. So now we're just giving it the gas. I don't know if I have enough in this tank, but I sure as hell have enough to get started. 
So I might have to run by somewhere and pick up some of this RS44. But that's all right, as long as I cut some charge into it. Get it to where it'll run and suck the rest in. So once it gets some in it, I like to come over to my vacuum gauge. This thing eats the battery, by the way. I just put a nine volt in this damn thing and it's already used up almost half of it. I turn it off and take it off because I don't like exposing it to the high pressure. And I also start taking my uh, vacuum hoses off, but I'm gonna have to do that with both hands because those are, those are, they don't flex all that well. They'll flex on you if you're not careful. this and put it on there so two pounds six ounces seven ounces moving right along uh, it's probably gonna start sweating as far as it hasn't started sweating yet actually okay so it is a cooler day outside today right um I got six pounds six ounces in it as you can see, we are no longer freezing. We have a very zesty superheat, 14 degrees. That's absolutely ace in the hole right there. Uh, 25 degrees of subcool. Like I've said, it's a cooler day. It's like 65 maybe. So we're gonna be running a pretty high subcool. Uh, condenser fan motor's running. Feels all right. Those are perfect numbers. Perfect. Very happy with the outcome of this fix. Mm, they're gonna be nice and cool downstairs this summer. Let's go ahead and get a walk around. God, it's windy. There's all my shit that I gotta get off the roof. That's my favorite part. It's just all this stuff has to go. this what the heck is going on there I'm gonna have to pull that panel off and fix that really shallow shitty traps hell guards oh she's pulling some heat perfect I love it all right, guys, I guess that's it. I mean, beautiful. Catch you on the next one, huh?